In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to insert a row of data just below the header in Google Sheets using some Google App Script magic. I recommend that you play along with this tutorial to get a better understanding of it. And there is a copy of the starter sheet in the written tutorial, and you can find a link for that in the description below. So on my left hand side here, we have our sample sheet and we'll run through three examples here. And you can stop wherever you need to stop along the way. The first example is just a basic one where we're going to insert a row at the top. In our second example, we have some name ranges we need to handle. And then in our third example, we have a couple of columns on the right hand side that contain formulas that we need to handle as well. All right, let's get started. So on my right hand side is a bound Google app script to this sheet here. And it contains already the start of two functions, the inset row at top function and the runsies function. This inset row at top is going to be our main driving function. And this runsies function is just a sample function that shows you how to use the inset row at top function in your own projects. All right, so let's create a bunch of data first. So let's create a constant variable. That's one that doesn't change. And let's create a target row. And this is going to be the row that we want to insert. So for us, we're going to call this two because every time we want to update this sheet, we want to insert a row in row two and drop everything further down. Next, we need a sheet name. So another constant variable and we'll call this one sheet name. And that's going to be equal to the name of the sheet that we want to work in. And this is going to be example two. So let's just copy that and bring that across between two double quotation marks. Next, we want to create a, some dummy data. And in our sample example, we've made it super easy on ourselves. We've just got a date as a string of milliseconds in time. And then we've got the date and then we've created a fake email based on that time. And we'll do the same here in our Runsies example. So let's create a function called my, my date. And that's going to be equal to a new date, which is a JavaScript constructor that will feed back a date. And then we just want to make a string of my date. So we'll call that my time, which will get the date in milliseconds since the epoch. And that's going to be my date dot get time. And that will look like this ID section here. Let's create our data. So const again and data. And let's make an array. So in if you're new to Google Sheets and Google Apps Scripts, a Google Sheet will be presented in Google Apps Scripts as a 2D array. So an array is contained by square brackets here. And each square brackets will have a bunch of data in. So this, this, and this inside the square brackets will be separated by a comma, and that'll be a row containing an array. Now each row is then contained in an outer array. So we need two sets of square brackets here. So the outer array contains a list of rows, and then the inner array contains the row data. So for us, that's going to be our my time, which is this ID here for our first value, then the my date as our next value. And then we'll go a little bit crazy. Let's make a template literal to uh, create a text field. And we'll put in the variable here, which will be my time. And then we'll say at example.com. Cool. So we've got this date here. Nice. So now let's run this function from our runsies function. And we can do that with by saying insert row at top. So what do we want to put in this insert row at top here? All right, so we've already got our parameters in for the time being. So the first one we want is our data field. Then we want our sheet name and then the target row. Cool. So let's head back here, down here. Just for convenience, I've kept these parameters the same for our arguments here. So you don't get confused. So the first one is going to be data. Then our next item is going to be the sheet dot name and then the target row. Cool. So that will now run this. All right. So now we need to put some code in here to insert this range. 
The first thing we need to do is grab our spreadsheet. So we can go const for a constant variable again, and we'll call this SS for spreadsheet, which is a common variable for it. And we'll invoke the spreadsheet app class and use the get active spreadsheet method. And this will get the active spreadsheet that we're currently working on. Now you can change this to uh, open by URL or open by ID as well. Okay. And then we want to grab our sheet. So const sheet is create our sheet variable. And that's going to be SS for a spreadsheet, get sheet by name. And then we're going to put it in our sheet name parameter, which is here. Good. All right. So now we've found the spreadsheet and now we've found the sheet tab that we're working in. Okay, so next up, we just need to insert a new row is our first task. So we can call the sheet again and say insert row before. And then we need to select where we want to insert that row. For us, that's going to be our target row, this one here. And in our example, that's going to be row two. So we want to insert a row before row two. So just insert it above row two. Cool. The next thing we want to do is add our data to that row. We can say sheet and let's just make a new line here and we'll do some nesting of methods. So we can say, and the first thing we need to do is get the range. And there's a couple of, couple of parameter types you can use for get range. We're going to use the one where it contains four numerical values. And the first value is going to be the target row where we want to insert our data. And then we want the column. So this is going to be column A, which for us is the first column. So we'll call this one. Then we need to tell get range how many rows deep uh, we want to get. And that's only going to be one row deep because we only have one row of data we're inserting. Finally, we need to explain how wide our data is or how many columns across it is. And we can do this by grabbing the data array that we built and then we need to get inside because if we've got the first level of the data array that's just going to tell us it has a length of one but if we get inside this array it's going to tell us it has one two three a length of three values so we'll say zero which is the zeros or first item in the array and then we're going to get the length of that Cool. Now we have a range, we can set the values in the range. So we can say set values. And those values are going to be our data. And set values takes a 2D array, which we generated here. Okay, so if we haven't made, oh, haven't made a mistake, and I think we have before we even started, so date should be data. Okay, I think we're good now. Let's hit save. So now let's change our function to the runsies function because that's where it will be run from. And every time we hit click the runsies function, it will get a new date. It'll get a new time from that date and then insert all that information into our data 2D array before running the insert row at top function here. All right, let's hit save and let's hit run. Now running it the first time will require authorization. So let's preview permissions. And as you can see, we've added in a new date here. If it doesn't add on the first time after permissions, just run the script again. So if I run the script a second time, you'll see things will change and we've added in another value here. Now, okay, if that's all the data you need, it's time to stop the video and start working on your own project. But if you've got something like a, a named range right, that is selected to say for all this data for all, some other formula that you're doing in your sheet, then every time we add a new value to this sheet, that name range is going to move down. Let me show you what happens. So let's just uh, select this range and you can see we've got data set as the name range for this particular range here. Let's go down and manage name ranges and click on our data set so we can see what's going on. So if I change, go down and change our example to example two in our runsies, and we'll cancel this. Keep an eye at this data set. We should. So let's hit run. And we've got a new item that's been added. 
but you can see our data set now has been moved down one row. Now we don't want that. If we're using this data set, we probably want all the data that's been added to this particular sheet tab. So how do we fix this issue? So let's just first go to edit and change this to A2 and hit done because that's essentially what we need to do when we update our formula. So what we're going to do down in our runsies sheet here is we'll add in a new variable. We will call named range name. Yep, it sounds weird, but the title is named range and we want the name of that named range. And that's going to be our data set item here. Cool. And in our insert row at top, we want to add this variable. So named range name. We'll just double click that to select, hit control C to copy, and we'll insert this into our parameters. Okay, so let's uh, scroll down to just these variables here. So we've got our spreadsheet and our sheet. We will also need to work out how deep our row is. So essentially it will be the last row available here. So we can see our name range. We've got our name range should extend from A2 all the way down to C16. So let's create another constant variable here to do all the working out. And we'll say row depth. And that row depth is going to be equal to sheet dot get last row, which is a spreadsheets app method. And that will get the last row, which will be 15. And then we need to subtract that from our target row. So 15 minus 2 is now 13. So we need to get the total length of all these values here. It would be 16 by the time we finished here. Right now we only have 13, so we need to add 3 to this, plus 3. Okay, so that will be our row depth. And then we may as well add in our constant and we'll make it col width for our column width, which we already have here, but we'll be using it twice. So we don't need to invoke this length two times. We just invoke it once and then we'll use rule reference column width. Oh, no, I spelled cons wrong. There we go. Cool. So now we've got two more variables added in there to help us out. And now let's work on our named range. So we've got our data. Once our data is all inserted, we need to update the named range so we can invoke the sheet again. And to get at the name range and modify it, we need to get a list of all named ranges on the sheet. So get named ranges. And this will give us an array of all the named ranges. So right now on the spreadsheet, we have data set and data set V2. From there, we need to find the data set array. So to do that, we can use the JavaScript find method which takes a function, which will use an arrow function to make things nice and tidy here. And we'll call this named range. And that's going to be our parameter. So as we iterate through named range and that named range dot get name. So it's the name of the named range as it iterates through the list needs to be equal to the named range name in our parameters up the top here. If it is equal, then this find iterator will stop and then return the row it stops on. And from that row, we can set the range. Now set range for named ranges takes another range. So we can grab sheet again and get range. And this time around, we need our target row as our starting row. And then our starting column is going to be one. And then we can use our row depth as how deep our row is. And our col width for how wide our range is going to be for this name range. Let's hit save again. And let's keep an eye on this data set here when we run the script, the Runzy script, and get rid of that. And let's hit run. 
And as you can see, the A2 hasn't changed, but C17 has changed to include the space down the bottom each time we add a new item. Awesome. What happens if we've got name ranges, but also we've got some formulas we want to include as well. So in this example, it's pretty much the same, but on the right hand side, we've got a bunch of formulas. And this is, might be something you experience in your normal workday life where you've, you're trying to import a bunch of data and then you want to apply some calculations to that data. Now my calculations don't mean anything, they're a bit silly, but it's a great example of what we need to modify. So let's look at this example. So in our runsies function now, let's add in a new variable that we'll call has formulas. And we'll set that to true. And we'll add this to our argument has formulas. Nice. Let's scroll back up and include this into our parameters has formulas. Let's just make this has formula an optional parameter and we'll just say if there's no has formula we'll just mark this as false to say there's no formula continue doing your thing. However after we insert our row we need to check to see if we have set the has formula to true and if we have then we need to move these formulas up into the newly inserted row in row two. Okay, so let's create an if statement that says has formulas. And inside our if statement, we will make a couple of constant variables. <clears throat> and the first one is const max columns. And that's going to be equal to the total number of columns across on our sheet. It's easy, it saves us figuring out where our columns should stop. So sheet dot get max columns. You could also use get last column too. Entirely up to you. And then when we copy these formulas across, we use the copy to method. And that takes a source range and a target range. The source range is going to be the row below. So this row will turn to row three, and we want to copy that row three up into row two. So const row below is equal to sheet dot get range, and that will be equal to target row plus one, because that now will be row three. Uh, and then our column start will be one, our row will be one, and then our max calls. Noise. Okay, and let's hold Shift Alt and down to duplicate that, and let's uh, this to row above, which will be our target row. And everything else is good except we want to keep that on our target row, not an offset of one. Cool. So we can use the row below and copy that with the copy to method, and apply that to the row above. And essentially, that's going to copy this entire row two here, which will be row three, when we insert a new row. And that will include all the data and the formulas and insert that to the row above. Okay, let's hit save now. Oh, and we need to change this to example three. Three, and we need to change our data set because our data set is different here. I think it's V2. Let's just double check that. Uh, data set V2, yep. So let's change that to V2, otherwise we'll get an error. And let's go up and hit our runsies function. Awesome. So what's happened? We've inserted a row before, so this has been inserted like this. Then this entire range here has been copied and pasted here like this. And then this section here, I'll just delete it so you can see, will be updated with this new date time data 2D array. 
Let's delete the row. So as you can see, these range values here have been automatically adjusted as they've moved up. Okay, so it's covered most of the edge cases you might find when you're adding a row of data below the header in Google Sheets with Google Apps Scripts. Now, there's copies of the code in the written tutorial that you can find in the link in the description below. And if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe and smash that notification bell. Until next time.